Welcome back to my channel, everyone. This week we're going to do another thing that's a little bit different and do a quick tour through my tent that I take to historical camping events. I've only been camping in a canvas tent like this for a few years and I'm really excited about how I've progressed and it's been coming together. As always, it's a work in progress, so I hope you enjoy a little tour of my home away from home. So reasons I love my canvas tent. Um, this one is roughly 10 by 20. It's 20 feet around the perimeter at the base, including the awning that's out front that you guys saw earlier. And it's about inside the tent itself here. It's about eight feet around the eaves. So it's enough room that myself and if necessary, my partner could also camp in this. And we have headspace that we could move around a bit, but it's also just so much cooler. Um, I only started using canvas personally for when I was doing historical camping, maybe 2017, 2018. So about five years ago and two, three years of that, what, two years of that was pandemic and another year of that was me just missing a season for my broken leg. So I've only been doing this for a couple of years, but it is so much cooler. Um, it is really hot in those nylon tents. So that might be something to consider once you know that this is a hobby that is long term. Um, that's kind of my, my big idea is I wouldn't invest in one of these when you're not going to be out doing camping on a fairly consistent basis during the summer or fall, spring. Basically, I don't personally like camping in the snow. I know there are some people who do it. Not, not me. But make sure it's actually worth your financial investment. I am a big proponent of play to your ability. And several of my friends that have helped me with this were able to help because they went through multiple different types of canvas tent over the years. 
So maybe go to an event and if you really like one, ask permission to check it out. Um, most people, if you approach them with generosity and kindness and curiosity, they'd love to show you their setup. And now that you've had the aesthetic look, I want you to see some of the more modern bits. This is a cot. It's hiding a flat of water. And that right there is a tarp to make sure that my ground doesn't get soaked through in case we get rain. There's also some more modern shoes, some bags for packing. I did grab a canvas bag to set out to grab my dirty laundry. And under this is actually a bucket for all of Zoe's food and treats. Because in case of raccoons, I don't want them to come in here and just steal all of her food. Um, Zoe's awesome crate down here which she is crate trained, she's not miserable, she's just confused on why I'm filming her in her box. Um, it actually makes a really good bedside table for me to do, we're gonna close you in, baby. For me to turn into a vanity and bedside table. Um, sometimes, depending on how hot it is, I let her sleep in her box, and that's why she's got this crate cover made out of an old quilt. And sometimes, if it's just me, I bring her up in the bed to snuggle because it's warmer. Um, but my mirror box is right here. If you haven't seen this video, um, I will link it down in the description where I go through some of the stuff I keep in my historical hairdressing box. When I'm camping, it also has some stuff like my lipstick, maybe a thing of hand lotion, nail clippers, that sort of thing. So. The stuff hiding back here is stuff like extra sunscreen and bug spray. And I also have a wash basin and pitcher in case I want to shower but there's not a shower truck on site. This is a really good option with some towels. For safety, I have a fire extinguisher outside of my tent at all times. I don't use real fire in my candles but in case there's a battery that goes sideways or some other electrical mishap, I do want to have something people can put me out with. And Zoe has just a yard stake with an old leash attached to it. That way she can hang out in the shade out here. At least when I'm around. Since my ropes are held down with some pretty hefty stakes, I put these little glow lights at the base of them. Sometimes you can get them for your garden paths with little solar panels like mine, and their purpose is to illuminate the ropes after dark. That way no one accidentally trips over something they can't see. Hi there. So the big purpose of me doing this um, tent tour is actually not to show off more than just kind of give inspiration and ideas. 
I still have ideas on how I want to upgrade and kind of tweak my tent setup, but I like the fact that I'm showing this to you when it's not perfect. Um, I hesitated in getting a canvas tent for years because I was worried I had to do everything right the first time. I've had a lot of help from friends who've used them before or just had more engineering sort of brains that could help me with poles and trying to figure out angles of ropes and that sort of thing. But I hope it's been helpful for you and looks like my battery is about to die so if this is the end of the uprising vlogs um, I'll see you when I get back to Denver. Bye.